Okay, so today we're going to make a very simple compounding interest rate calculator in Python. So I'm using the Spider IDE. You can use whatever IDE you want to do this. Uh, let's get right to it. So the first thing we're going to do is create some variables. We're going to scan them in to the system. First one's going to be principal. And there's two things we can do. We can do an integer, int, which is something which is the whole number. So nine or seven or six, those are all integers. We can do, or you can do a float, which would be something like 9.25 or 10 point, you know, 30 or 606, whatever. For the principal amount, we're going to do int. You're going to do parentheses, type in put parentheses, a quotation mark, and then type your message that you want the user to see. Type um, um, starting amount, end quote. So if you actually hit play or, or run, the run button right here, uh -oh, it says I have invalid syntax. Oh, yeah, doy, sorry. I forgot to type equals. Uh, principal equals int input type oh, starting amount, blah, blah, blah. So now you hit run, and you see type starting amount right here. So I can just type, you know, 1,000, and that's the end of the program so far. So we're going to add some more variables. We have annual addition. So let's do addition. This is the amount you're going to add to your savings every year. Equals the same thing, int parentheses, input parentheses, quote, type, annual addition, end quote. Now we're going to do rate. This is the interest rate. Rate equals float. We want to be able to do 4.5, 5.6, you know, stuff like that. Parentheses, input, parentheses, quote, type, enter, s, rate. And then we have time equals int so this will be the years you're going to invest uh same deal enter number of years to invest end quote and now if we play this all of these are going to run type starting amount thousand type annual edition thousand type rate five number of years to invest ten and that's the end of the program. Before we go any further, let's enter down a couple of one line. Now, if you do 5% for an interest rate, 5% interest is not the number 5. It's 0 0.05. So what we need to do is we want to create a variable. It's going to take the rate and multiply it in such a way to turn it into a 0 0.0 instead of just the number 5, for example. So let's make a variable called real rate equals this is going to be rate with the asterisk because that's multiplication times 0 0.01 that will take whatever we enter for rate and multiply it by 0 0.01 which will create the actual interest rate that we want to use now let's save this and let's hit enter a couple of times so now we're going to make a print statement. We're going to print out the first amount of interest you're going to get in the first year. So print. Now remember, the first year you don't have your annual edition. You just have what you started with. So print um, parentheses. Now the print is actually going to output um, the, math, the math function that we're going to do. This is an output. So type principal principal times, that's the asterisk, is multiplication. And a matter of fact, if you just did real rates, that would multiply the principal, say, $1,000 by 0 .05, which would give you $5. But, you know, $5 is obviously not what you're going to end up with after a year. That's the, the interest you're going to get. But we want to know the total. So what you want to do is do parentheses 1 plus real rate. So putting this in parentheses is going to tell uh, Python to multiply one plus real rate before doing anything else. 
So this will take, say, 0 0.03, and it's going to add 1 to it and make it 1.03, which is going to give us what we're going to end up with when we multiply that by the principal. So now, let's save this and let's run this file. So run, enter, starting amount 1,000, annual addition 1,000, interest rate, I'm going to do 6.6. .6. Years to invest 10. Well, the first year, we're going to get $1,066. That's the output. All right, so that's year number one. Well, how do we get year number two? Well, let's go back up here and let's create another variable called, let's call it, um, right? uh, we're going to call it I. We're going to make it incrementer. So you can, you can call it whatever you want. We're going to make this I and I equals zero. Now you go down here and you type a while. We're going to make a while loop. While I is less than time, see time is the amount of time you're investing, colon, press enter. Now you're going to notice anything you type here is indented in this, underneath this while loop. Well, if this was over here, then this would not be included in the while loop. In order to be included in the while loop, it has to be indented over. That's how Python knows that you want to create a, a while loop. You want to contain or nest everything that comes after the statement in the loop. All right, so now we're indented. Principal equals, uh, am I spelling this right? Principal plus addition, because now we're adding the addition. This is year two, where we add the annual addition. Put this in parentheses, so Python does this math function first. I'm going to do asterisk, parentheses, 1 plus real rate. This is going to add the addition to the principal, then it's going to multiply it by 1 plus real rate. Now, go over here, hit, hit enter again. I equals I plus 1. So every time Python runs through this while loop and adds this, this together, it's going to add 1 to I. And eventually, I is going to equal time. And since this while loop only runs when I is less than time, when I is no longer less than time, the while loop stops running. And, and then, it, then this is over. And now, we're going to do a print statement to end it. So, print, quote, and do, or rather not quote, parentheses. Now, do quote, total end quote, do a comma, and then type principal, all right? So now let's run this right here and see what we get. Enter starting amount, 1,000, enter annual addition, say 1,500, interest rate, uh, I'm going to do 12, that's a big interest rate. You have to invest 10, and now here's our output. See, look at that, now you get, you get 2,800 for second year, 4,816 for third year. It's just, it's incrementing through this. So it's running through this and adding principal, it's adding this together, then it adds one to I, it prints the output, which is this line, then it starts over again, adds, the, adds this together starting from what you got the last time you ran the while loop, adds one to I, starts over, and it keeps doing it until I is no longer less than time. Now let's see how much we have in total. We, we did 10 years. We might end up with 11 years, which would be a mistake. Well, let's count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we, start, we ended up with 11 years. Well, that's because I is 0. Let's make I 1. And let's do over here as to, for consistency. We're going to type... On the, on the first print statement for the first year, quote, total, end quote, comma, for consistency. Now, when we run this again, it's going to print the proper amount. So I'm just going to enter my stuff here, 10. So now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 print statements. And this would be what you would end up with if you invested $1,000, added $1,200 every year with an interest rate of 5% for 10 years, you would end up with $1,544 and change at the end of that. Now, one more thing I want to show you before we wrap this simple tutorial up. What if you don't want the program to end after it's done running? What if you want it to continue? You want the user to be able to start over again and enter different numbers. 
Well, let's go up here to our variables and create another variable called start over equals quote true. All right, so start over equals true. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to make another while loop. While start over equals quote true semicolon uh, colon, and we're going to have to move start over up top. So we must start over to be the first thing that the program runs. That way start over is true. The while loop is true. So anything uh, nested in this while loop will run. And now nothing is nested in this while loop yet because nothing is indented over. So you need to indent everything inside the while loop. But there's actually a quicker way to do that than doing it line by line. If you're using Spider, you highlight everything and hit Tab. And now everything is indented in this while loop. So while start over is true, this program will run. Well, now what we need to go do is go down to the bottom, hit enter, enter a couple times, hit backspace. So take this out of this while loop. We do not want the next statement in this while loop. We only want it in the, the main while loop. Um, make a variable called redo program equals input parenthesis quote uh, to restart type y or to quit type any key end quote. So that's going to ask this question. You're going to type Y. It'll scan it into redo program. Go here, hit enter. Now we're going to do an if else statement. So if redo program equals equals. As a matter of fact, I screwed that up up here. Start over. Uh, while start over equals true, it should be double equals. Equals equals true is what it needs to be. All right. So if redo program equals equals quote y colon hit enter, you're going to notice the next line of code is nested inside this if statement. Then we're going to say start over equals true. So start over will, will be true, in which case the while loop evaluates to true when the program starts again. So hit enter and hit backspace. And then you type else, colon, all right? So now the else statement is outside of this if statement, but it's still inside the main while loop. Hit enter, else start over, it can equal anything other than true equals null. Now start over equals null, this evaluates to false and the program does not run. So let's save this and let's run the program and see what we get. Type amount, 1,000, annual edition, 1,200, interest rate, 5. You have to invest 10. To restart the program, type Y. So type Y, and now you're starting over. Type starting amount, 1,000, or 100, rather, and 1,400, rate, 30%. That's a big, fat interest rate. I wish I could get that. 10 years. Okay, it's case we get. To quit the program, type any key. So I'm going to type G, and now the program's, you know, it's quit because start over, evaluated to null which means this is no longer true. This is all I wanted to show you in uh, this, uh, this lesson. At a certain point, we might make this a lot more complicated, but this is the basics. Um, if you know how to do this stuff in Python, you can do a decent amount and, you know, in Python or really in any programming language. So thanks for watching. If you like this, subscribe. I'll have more to come in the future.